This is an HP Pavilion P6 series and it's got an AMD A8 Vision processor in it. And I've looked at the specs. It's an A8-5500. So that's a quad-core processor with built-in graphics. And this is uh, from 2012 and relatively modern. You know, it's got USB 3. Um, I think it's got DDR3 memory, but also it's got an interesting few extra bits. And if I spin this around, I'll show you what I mean. It's got an upside down motherboard, as you can see. Um, but it's also got an extra graphics card, which doesn't make much sense considering it's got built in graphics. So it did have some screws on here covering these up. Uh, covers were covering these up so that you d weren't meant to use them, but you're meant to use this onboard card. It's also got this little TV tuner thing down here and then the power supply here. So I'll show you what's inside and we can have a look what's going on. There's loads of USB, there's um, this optical out, and this network and lots of audio connections there. And inside we find there's a Wi-Fi card back there, there's the graphics card and we've got four memory slots, which is quite nice to see. Um, and then we've got a hard drive here, an optical drive. And then this is the power supply, which is a 300 watt uh, power supply. Um, so let's fire it up and see what's going on. Um, there's a, this is the little TV tuner card down here, which connects strangely into the motherboard, um, which is a bit odd. Not really seen that kind of thing before. Um, and then it's an MS7778 motherboard. So I'm gonna switch it on with the power button at the top. Got a pretty cool light here. Um, and there's nothing in the optical drive. I've installed Windows 10 on here. We've got four gigabytes of DDR3 memory. And the fans have got a lot quieter after it's um, been switched on for a little bit. As it's a traditional hard drive, it's pretty slow booting up. We're, we're still booting up. I, I paused the video for about a minute. Um, I've come back. I should have timed it. Um, I didn't, but now we are. It's slow, as you would expect. And we're at the desktop. So I thought it'd be worthwhile seeing how the graphics card here uh, compares to the graphics card built into the processor. And I'll just tell you what the graphics card is. And I'll just tell you what the graphics card is. Once the system stops booting up and actually becomes responsive. This is what's inside the pro uh, computer. It's uh, AMD Radeon HD 7450. Um, and we've also got some other bits and pieces. There's a WinTV mini stick. I think that's this card here, OEM, um, processor A85500 APU with Radeon HD graphics, DVD RAM, HP branded model, Western Digital 500, digital out for the audio, then we've got this um, gigabit ethernet controller and I'm not sure what's going on with the Wi-Fi card in there because um, it's not detecting any Wi-Fi networks at all so I don't know what's going on there with that but um, maybe it 
doesn't work with Windows 10. But anyway, this, this is the graphics card and we'll have a look at how it performs and then compare it to the one in the processor. I thought I'd start off with something a little bit gentle, such as 3D Mark 2005. Let's see how it does with this before moving on to 3D Mark 2011. This PC is from 2012, so in theory it should be okay with these, but we won't know till we've tried running them. So I'm going to just turn the audio down for this bit. So we should be able to uh, view the results online now and see what the built-in graphics, the HD7450 managed. I think the frame rates were quite slow, so we might not want to run 3D Mark 2011. And we can just stick with 3D Mark 2005. It seems that every time I think, oh, I'll just do a quick video on uh, this PC or that PC, um, something goes wrong and the video ends up taking way longer than I had wanted. Okay, we finally made it. Uh, we got 6594 with the AMD Radeon HD 74501X. Um, graphics driver is not approved. CPU score 750 and the card's got one gigabyte of memory and those are the details there. Now it is time to take the card out and just use the built-in graphics on the processor and we'll see what the results are like. So we've taken the card out and we're booting back into Windows now. And this is the card we've taken out. Looks pretty cool. It's got an HP part number here. So the built-in uh, graphics card built into the uh, processor is the HD 7560D. And I'll start the benchmark now and we'll have a look how it performs. I guess there's a slight disadvantage to the system now and that the um, built-in graphics is probably using some of the memory uh, from the system and there's only four gigabytes of RAM. But the frame rate's looking a little bit better, I think. Um, but we'll find out what the results are at the end. Okay, so we've made it to the end of that. I've got to connect it back to the internet to um, get the results from 3D Mark 2005 because everybody loves connecting to the internet to get something that's on the computer. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, just connected to the internet to uh, see the results. Hopefully this won't take as long as last time. I should have also looked at how much um, power the system was using with the additional graphics card, but it shouldn't be that much because it doesn't require additional power. Okay, so it was set to have 512 megabytes uh, memory for the graphics card built into the processor. These are all the uh, details. And the score, 7856. So that's noticeably higher than the graphics card using the APU. So that begs the question, why have 
HP fitted this graphics card to this system. Unless it's so they could have given an HDMI out. Um, but it doesn't really make sense. Perhaps, you know, maybe this system was sold with this graphics card. And if you had a slower processor, this would be quicker. Or, yeah, maybe this was an optional extra that someone decided to add to this PC. Maybe it was HP. I don't really know. But this is where we get better performance by taking out the graphics card and using the one built into the processor. I think for this system, um, I'll put some more memory in it. So it's got eight gigabytes of memory and then it can run in dual channel. Um, and this processor, the 885500, looks like it performs better than an Intel Q6600. I know that's not a modern processor by any stretch, but as a reference point, um, it's quite useful because I've got a PC here that um, I tend to use quite a lot. And it does a job for Windows 10 when it's compared with an SSD drive. Whereas this one actually can run quicker and uses less power. This is using about 42 watts right now. And this could be a useful low power machine. Um, it's got virtualization enabled. Um, could be quite useful with some more memory and an SSD drive. Let's just have a look at CPZ. It's also relatively quiet. using about 92 watts under load. It's also got um, audio by Beats, I think. Yeah, it's got this little Beats audio setting. Don't know if that's any good or not, but interesting to see. And it's quite a stylish looking system. It's quiet, relatively low power. And seems to be better without the graphics card. So interesting, if slightly odd, computer. What do you think of this system? What would you do with it? I think the easiest thing for me is to um, upgrade the memory in this and then um, see if anyone needs a little office PC for something. Yeah, thanks for watching and goodbye.